my name is John Conway. I'm the Automation Sales Manager for Rexel here in Western New York. I want to welcome you today to our series, our Tech Talk Tuesday series. Uh, today's one is on safety. Uh, this is, again, one in a series, and we're looking for information. Um, if you do have other uh, topics you want us to look at, please uh, let us know, and we will put that on. They are normally Tuesdays at 10, as is today's. And again, today's subject is safety, and we're fortunate to have our TV uh, specialist, uh, Chris Ryan, who's in charge of safety and sensor sensors uh, to go over a specific product, light curtain, and uh, just some housekeeping before I turn it over to Chris. We are being recorded. I would ask that you mute yourself um, if you are attending. And if you have any questions, put it in the chat uh, during the meeting and we'll review it at the end. And we will also open it up at the end. So with that in mind, I'll turn it over to Chris. Hi, John. Thanks for that introduction. Um, let me show what we're working with here today. So like John said, I'm an automation specialist with Rexel. Uh, I support the safety sensors, industrial control, and motion segments of the Ellen Bradley Rockwell automation portfolios. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the 450L uh, safety light curtain system, and uh, we'll be going over uh, everything. So the simple on-off functionality, it's going, you're going to have a hazard and it's going to kill power with the safety contactor like that. If you'll notice, um, you have uh, auxiliaries on that we can wire up. We'll go over that during the presentation today. So I want to start off by noting one of the main differentiators between this light curtain compared to others that are on the market. With 450L, the same part number that is used as the transmitter can also be used as a receiver. So you don't need to carry as many spares. Uh, some customers who normally stock a, a spare transmitter and receiver, they might choose to stock one transceiver stick. So if you have any issues, you can just replace the stick or the plug-in that goes with it. So installation is quicker. And we also have a software development environment called Connected Components Workbench. Um, that has improved troubleshooting and diagnostics as well. So the 450L is an advanced safety light curtain platform. The functionality is set by a plug-in. I think of that as a personality module. This means that you just pay for the features that you need and you have the option to upgrade functionality at any point in the future. Also, it has active sensors along the entire length of the stick. Um, so if you work with older light curtains, you'll usually notice a connection point at the top, the top and bottom uh, with a dead space for the connector uh, where you could sneak by um, and then get injured by the hazard. Uh, this product family is certified as type 4 by EN61496 as the electrosensitive protection equipment. The certification allows the product to be used in applications that require a performance level E or Category 4 according to ISO 13849. It has a modern compact design. Uh, the cross section is 1.2 inches by 1.2 inches, and it's available in sizes from just under 6 inches uh, up to 6 foot 5 inches. That's um, 150 millimeters to uh, 1,950 millimeters. So the, the light curtain comes in two different uh, versions, two platforms. We have the 450LB, think of B for basic, uh, that has on-off functionality. And then we have the 450LE, think of E for enhanced, uh, for applications that require um, blanking, muting, or cascading. The two 450L versions have no difference in their cross-section, protective heights, uh, resolutions, that's 14 millimeter or 30 millimeter uh, spacing between the laser beams. Um, the enclosure ratings for both IP65 and your operating and storage temperature and mounting options are all the same. Uh, so everything will look the same on the two models. The transceiver sticks, um, the, the E model will have additional diagnostic LEDs. It'll have an integrated laser alignment system, and it'll have a removable top for a cascading plug-in. So here, features that are in red are common to both the B and E models. Features 
that are in blue are specific to the E model. The 450LE model further benefits from light curtain parameters being able to be configured directly in connected components workbench, uh, which up to this time in the phase one firmware could only be set using the dip switches on the plug-in modules. Uh, so the B and E models both have regional intensity indicators, which are the LEDs right here between the out and the reset LEDs. Uh, regional, LED, regional intensity LEDs give you a quick indication of how closely and how well the product is aligned. Uh, so if it's not aligned perfectly, they'll actually blink when you're getting close and they'll go solid green when alignment is in spec. 450LE with the enhanced version, we have the integrated laser alignment system to make it simple and quick as possible to align the light curtain. Rockwell added the inverted laser symbol. If you look at the right picture here, that's where you should be aiming the laser to, the prominent beam. And this small white square here, that's actually the laser itself um, from the opposing, uh, so you'll be aiming this laser from the opposing stick at this target here, at the big white block. Um, you also see these three white beam, uh, these three beams here. Um, there's actually more than that, but that'll help with vertical alignment. Um, so for with the 450LB with the basic model, it doesn't have the integrated laser alignment system, but you can use a snap-on tool, an accessory to help with that, and I will show you that. So you just take your 450LB here, and if you doesn't have integrated laser alignment, you just take your laser, your 440LALAP, and you snap it onto your bracket like that, snap it to your light curtain, and you can use this uh, very similar to the integrated laser alignment system on the enhanced model. Uh, so on this table, you'll see where the differences are. For 450LB, uh, we class basic as only having reset, external device monitoring, and low operating range functionality. If you want to do muting, blanking, or cascading, you'll have to upgrade to the E model. Um, so for your simplest applications, simplest build materials, uh, most people will just use two universal plugins. That's the second row from the bottom here. This plug-in module can be used for the transmitter or the receiver. I'll show you what these look like too. So these are what the plug-in modules look like. They pretty much all look the same and they slide into the bottom of your light curtain like, like this. And the cascading plug-in, which would slide in through the top. So you'd have two like that if you're going to cascade your light curtains. Um, this is the smallest version. This is the only uh, version that can't accept the cascading module because they won't fit. We'll go into cascading more later. Uh, I also want to point out that the transmitter plug-in has no dip switches. And this is a universal plug-in with dip switches. So if you're using a universal plug-in, in the transmitter module, the dip switch settings will be ignored. Um, also, the cascading plugin will look the same, except it'll have a female plug to accept another uh, light curtain on top. Um, so what you're seeing here is a price compared to functionality chart. At the bottom left-hand corner, we have the cheapest and simplest. Top right-hand is the most advanced. Looking at the entire range of Allen Bradley, Rockwell range of light curtains, the 450LB is positioned toward the lower end of the price range. Price-wise, it's actually more than 10% lower than the equivalent Safe 4 model. And the 450LE has greater functionality for a uh, lower price than the 440L Guard Shield Type 4. Uh, note in here, we're also seeing that the Safe 4 is being obsoleted. That is slated to be discontinued October 31st, 2020. Um, and that is because the um, component availability of the ASIC um, 
So this, this is only the POC platform. These are all point of operation control. Uh, just wanted to note that for area access control or perimeter access control, we do have other devices such as uh, laser scanners and other types of devices. This is all point of operation control. Uh, before into, I go into applications, I just quickly want to show how these are mounted. Um, these L-shaped brackets come with the stick. Um, they can also be installed uh, up or down, so you can hide them behind the stick if you need to save space. And then there's an optional side side clamp here. Um, this uh, allows for a little bit more rotation. I'll, sh I'll show you these real quick too. So this is your top and bottom bracket. Um, you can have two holes here. You can screw it on this way or to the side, however you want. And then there's a um, bolt here to put it down. And then with the side mounting bracket, this can be screwed through the back or to the side. And then there's a clip here, you snap it on, put on the clip, and it allows for uh, rotation plus or minus five degrees. Uh, we also have a replacement kit. In, in case you have another light curtain, an older one, or a competitor light curtain in the field, this allows for more vertical alignment. The L bracket or the side bracket can be bolted directly to this. So typical applications uh, for 450L at the moment, 450L and B and E are only suitable for point of operation control. Uh, sometime this year, Rockwell is going to be releasing a PAC version of this. Uh, that's um, later 2020. And then future in development, there will be an area access control in development as well. So eventually we'll be able to do everything with 450L family. Um, and as I said before, there's other devices um, for those types of applications already currently available. So types of POC applications. B and E uh, can both be used to do simple on-off applications. B actually only does on-off. You can also accept a reset signal or external device monitoring if you're not going to be using a logic interface or a PLC for your reset and um, EDM. Uh, on the right hand side over here, we've got specialty applications. So if you've got shock and vibration or if you're in food and beverage and you need a wash down light curtain, um, we have other light curtain families for that. We've got the 440Ls and the Micro 400s, nothing at the moment for 450L but those will be coming in the future. If you want to do advanced functionality, such as blanking, cascading, or muting, uh, you're going to want to, you must use the E. Um, so we're going to be talking about these three advanced applications from right to left. This shows cascading. That is uh, these light curtains bending around the corner, connected in series to each other. That's cascading. Uh, blanking is where we um, blank beams uh, anywhere in there. There's a few different forms of that. We'll be talking about that next. Um, and then muting. This is typically on a conveyor with additional muting sensors to detect uh, the difference between material that needs to pass through and a human. So we're going to start with cascading. A uh, picture on the top left here shows a setup with two cascaded segments and an L-shaped setup. Uh, some notes about a cascaded system, only configurable in 450LE. Uh, Cascading feature is only available in heights from the uh, one foot or 11.8 inch model and longer. That's because the plug-in, as, as I showed you before, uh, won't fit. Um, that shorter version can be used as the last pair in the, in the cascaded system. Maximum of four 450LE safety light curtains can be interconnected with a common pair of OSSDs. Uh, each cascaded pair can have a resolution of 14 millimeters or 30 millimeters. Um, each cascading pair functions as an independent light curtain. Uh, the cable length between them can't exceed 10 meters. Uh, it is possible to configure your uh, reset modes or your start modes and your EDM at the host pair. And that will allow the whole cascading system to operate in those modes. Uh, if you want to use features like beam coding or blanking, each pair has to be configured separately. And then for muting applications, uh, four-sensor four muting cannot be applied to a cascaded system because those additional sensors need to be uh, wired through the cascaded plugin. 
Um, another note is that the universal plug-in cannot be used in the transmitter side of a cascaded system at this time. You have to use the transmitter plug-in, the 8-pin uh, APT PW8 on the transmitter side of the pair. Future firmware will allow you to use the universal plug-in uh, on the transmitter side of the pair. I want to talk about a couple things that can happen uh, when you mount uh, two light curtains too closely together, whether they're cascaded or just mounted close together, you can have optical interference. That's when your receiver sporadically sees the infrared light from another transmitter. And then you've got optical crosstalk. That's when your receiver continuously communicates with the transmitter of another pair, uh, which can cause holes in your uh, protective field. But optical crosstalk only happens if you have the same resolution and the same height, and you don't follow the spacing guidelines here in this table. So some measures you can take to avoid that are follow the minimum spacing guidelines here in this table S, depending on uh, distance D here. You can install optical barriers as shown as the, in these blue bars here on the lower left picture. Or you can use beam coding, which is a feature in 450LE, uh, which allows you to change the exchange the addresses of the sticks, which generates a different pulse pattern um, for each pair. That's referred to as beam coding. So the next enhanced function we're going to talk about is blinking and reduced resolution, uh, only configurable in 450LE. Uh, blinking allows objects that are wider than the optical resolution to pass through or stay in the protected field without causing a stop. These functions can be enabled with the blinking plugin or the muting plugin. So those are the part numbers for those. This is showing the dip switch settings on the blinking plugin. Uh, the dip switch numbers will be a little bit different on the muting plugin, but same idea here. Uh, so this is fixed blinking. This is the simplest form. Um, it can be taught. So the blinked area of a light curtain right between here, this is always monitored, which means that if this part is moved away and the receiver sees these beams, you're going to have a fault. Um, with teach-in blinking, uh, as I said, beams are taught. With the new firmware update, uh, you can actually program the blinked area in connected components workbench. Uh, following a procedure. And this is the procedure. And this procedure is required anytime you uh, configure a new configuration in your light curtain. This is, um, I'm not going to show this because I have my light curtain set to software configuration. Uh, however, this is how everybody's been doing it. Uh, if you're familiar with the light curtains in the past, what I usually do uh, in this situation is get out a stopwatch because you have to get really accurate here just over five seconds or at least for just under two seconds and put your finger back on this mark right here this white square with the picture of the, the hand and that'll uh, confirm that your new configuration is active uh, as i said the new software update allows for additional configuration uh, you can define your blanking modes um, different zones actually up to eight zones so you can define your zone, you know, between uh, lens 1 and 15 as floating blanking, between 16 and 30 as fixed blanking, uh, such as that. Um, actually, I'll do a short demo of that because so you can see what that looks like. Uh, so right now we don't have any blanking. I uh, just want to show you connected components workbench. So here we have Connected Components Workbench right now. We're live with the controller, so we have no blanking. Right now I'm, I'm putting my hand in the light curtain. You can see which beams are blank. Um, and that clicking you hear is my safety contactor opening up and killing power to the motor. Uh, you can see the strength. These little gray numbers here are the last beams that were blanked out. Uh, so what you can do with the software configuration of blanking is you can set something here where it's going to be. And I have a water bottle that's just in the way. And you see that which beams are blank. So up to up to beam 20 here. So to change the configuration, we have to go offline with the light curtain. And we can go into our configuration here. And we will just call for software configuration in the settings. And we'll define uh, zone one is blanking. And that was up to beam 20. So now we're going to have fixed blinking of uh, 
1 through 20, and all we have to do is download this configuration to the light curtain and reset. And it takes a couple of minutes to reset. So um, I guess I'll just let that run in the background or not do it, but we'll, we'll carry on. But that shows how easy it is to do blanking configuration uh, with, with, the, with the new software update. Um, and that just shows the configuration screen. Uh, a couple things to look out for. The top and the bottom are synchronization beams. So one of them must be unblocked at all times before uh, the teach procedure can be done. Uh, you can't have more than four areas to blank at once. Uh, you can't teach more than four areas to blank at once. Uh, you can do it in the software configuration. Um, and another note, Activating reduced resolution changes the resolution of the light curtain. So just think about that if your machine risk assessment calls for a specific resolution at a certain distance from the hazard. And the last enhanced functionality we're going to talk about is muting. To do this, the muting plugin must be installed. That's your 450L-APR for receiver, dash MU for muting, dash 8 for 8 pins. Uh, what muting is, is the temporary automatic suspension of the light curtain without switching off the outputs. So a typical application is a conveyor belt. Uh, it is possible to transport goods through the conveyor. Uh, you want to, the way to detect that that is a is material and not a, not a human is through a, a certain sequence of events and timing that are used. And those are with muting sensors. So in this picture, you see these red lasers here. Those are your muting sensors. Um, they're going to have to, the box is going to have to pass by a uh, one, then two, then the light curtain in a certain time sequence, and it'll be muted for a certain time, which is programmable. This can be set with dip switches. Um, and then when that passes through, it's protected again. Also, a uh, muting lamp is necessary to warn an operator when the light curtain is muted. And you can see details of that in 62046 in IEC. Uh, the muting lamp is on when the light curtain is muted. If an error in the muting sequence has occurred, the muting lamp blinks. So these are the different muting types. T-type and L-type refers to the shape of the light curtain and muting sensors when viewed from the side. Uh, the sensors will be arranged in the shape of an upside down capital T if the muting sensors are on both sides of the light curtain, or they'll be arranged in the shape of a capital L if muting sensors are only on one side of the light curtain. So on the top left, we've got the two sensor T-type muting arrangement. Um, I want you to notice that these muting sensors are arranged asymmetrically. That is so that the material passes the light beams at different times. So it'll pass this muting sensor, then this one, then the light curtain, it'll be muted, and then it'll unmute itself once the material passes this sensor. Um, bottom left, we've got the two sensor L-type. This is probably the most common type that I see in the field. We have a palletizer or a boxer or a taping machine or a press or something that's making parts, stuff is coming out. You want your pallets and your material to come down the conveyor out of the machine, but you don't want humans to go in and get hurt. So they set up two sensors here and um, arrange uh, muting that way. This top right muting arrangement is the only type that requires connected component workbench to configure. Uh, this, this is used if you have a um, periodic or um, maybe a, a very small package that's coming out that's not the same. So you'd have a signal here. Muting sensor 3 would be a signal either from an operator or could be from the conveyor itself. So muting sensor 3 or the enable would have to turn on at the same time as this sensor to let material go this way and then vice versa to come out. And then the bottom right we have our four sensor T type muting, which is similar to the two sensor L type, except it moves in both directions. This next slide just shows the uh, timing sequences, which can be configured. Uh, this corresponds to each sensing type. And these are some of the new screens, the configuration screens in the software update that you will see. Um, we've got the dip switch settings you can see in connected component workbench. You can select the muting type, and then the timing sequences can all be done uh, in the software. As I said, um, 
most of these can be done with zip switches, zip switches without the software at all. And, and these are some accessories for muting. Um, these, are, these are new accessories. We have a muting block to make it very simple to plug in your muting sensors and your light curtain. We have a uh, muting station here for your mute dependent override, the light and your selector, and then we have a muting lamp. We also have a muting stand. This can be bought with or without these cantilever arms that hold, hold your muting sensors. We have a few different type of um, stands you can use, but this makes it very simple to set up uh, an advanced muting application with a light curtain. Uh, Force sensor muting requires a cascading plug-in to wire those additional sensors. If you're using one of the two sensor muting application types, those sensors can be wired to the muting block or directly to the muting plug-in. This accessory here is the way light curtains are connected to your computer. This is the OID or the optical interface device. I will show you what this looks like. This is the 450L OID. This is going to be placed over the diagnostic light on your light curtain. You see I have one here on the 450LE. Um, this has a hard stop on it. It's very simple. It just goes on just like that. Plugs into a USB-A on your computer. Has a USB mini on, on the OID. Uh, to enable all these, these new features, uh, you'll need to be running the latest firmware version. 4.001 and had the latest revision 12 of Connected Clones Workbench. The upgrade is available on the um, Rockwell Automation Product Compatibility and Download Center, uh, the PCDC. There's also a tech note on how to how to do everything. So I um, I can actually show you that because that's pretty quick to go through how to do that. So I think you can still see my screen. We're just going to go to ellenbradley.rockwellautomation.com. Click downloads going to bring you to the PCDC. Quick search. You're going to need a couple of software packages to do these upgrades. If you're already familiar with the 450L uh, system or the Connected Clones Workbench family, I'll, I'll assume you have that already. Uh, you'll need the Control Flash firmware tools. It'll auto populate. You're going, to, you're going to need to download Control Flash firmware tools. You also need the 450L Connected Components Workbench uh, installation package. So download those two uh, software packages and you'll have to have CCW, so download that too if you don't have it. I just wanna plug Connected Components Workbench real quick. So this, this software is free, uh, so are those other ones. So you should be using this. I just wanna show uh, how versatile this software is. I'm clicking add device right now. So these are all the devices that can be configured with Connected Components Workbench. You have the Micro 800 series of component level PLCs, your low voltage uh, drives, your PowerFlex AC variable frequency drives, even a, a servo drive, uh, the component level servo drive, your soft starters for safety, you've got your motion monitoring relays, your safety uh, PLC, your, your component level safety configurable relay here, your light curtain, which I added to, to this project, and we have component level HMIs as well, your panel view 800s. So with those two software packages installed, uh, what you're gonna wanna do is after, after you install those, you're gonna be able to have your OID plugged in, click device, and you're gonna first wanna update the firmware of your OID, you're gonna click this. Uh, from there, what you're gonna wanna do is put that OID on your transceiver stick, uh, when you update your transceiver stick, whatever plugin is installed into that transceiver stick will get updated at the same time. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to do is take your OID, put it on the other transceiver stick, and update that one. And then you're good to go. And then you will have the update. Uh, so now we're talking about the features in the phase two software update. This just came out at the end of April, 2020. Uh, the B and the E models both benefit, benefit from uh, upgraded beam statuses, help with diagnostics. You'll be able to export and import your configuration files. 
the E model further benefits from parameters being able to conf be configured directly in CCW, uh, which up to this time in the phase one firmware could only be set using dip switches. These are some of the screens for configuration for the advanced functionality, your general purpose IO. Uh, I'll show you what that looks like too. So your GPIO, I actually have mine set up. I have one of my auxiliary outputs set to just give me the status of my safety outputs. So I have a light that's on when my safety outputs are on, but this shows you all the options. So you can wire these status signals to your PLC or your status indicators or alarms or lights. Um, you can see the status of your dip switches. If I turn this off, then you can see what configuring with dip switches allows you to do. So if I turn software configuration with dip switch one on, then I just do it from, from here. And I go to sub config and I can enable muting or blanking and do all my configuration there. So updated mode statuses, uh, when, when you change your configuration, it'll be unlocked. You have to confirm your lock status. We have error, lockout modes, theme statuses. So if you, you, and you'll see this, if you have fixed blanking on the first half, you'll see it all, all blue and then theme status is here. Uh, whereas before you could just see if it was blocked or not. The configuration files, this is, this is really helpful. Uh, your report functionality, this will tell you everything from how your, how your light curtain is configured to total operating time and export that for uh, remote maintenance or if you need help off site. And um, I just wanted to include this as a reminder to everybody as your um, functional safety technician for machinery that all presence sensing safety devices require you to use a safety distance calculation from your hazard. So in the United States, we use the uh, ANSI standard, the B11.19 standard, which just says that your uh, safety distance is equal to your hand speed constant, that's uh, 63 inches per second. And you multiply that by the sum of your stop time of your machine tool, plus your stop time of your control system, plus your response time of your present sensing equipment, plus your response time of your brake monitor. And then you add that to your uh, depth penetration factor, factor, and that depends on your resolution of your light curtain. Some other accessories, um, we've got the smart cap. If you're using a um, GuardLink uh, smart safety system, these T-splitters, uh, it's gonna be done with some five pin plugins, very simple to wire your light curtain that way. Weld shield, shock mounts, and uh, corner mirrors if you're, if you're bending around corners. And we don't have to go through these, this is how to order it with the part numbers. So in conclusion, uh, for the LE single stick concept has been very well received. Uh, customers don't have to carry as many spares. If they need to replace just the plug-in or just the stick, that's a, that's a big selling point. So your installation is a lot quicker, reduce maintenance. We have uh, CCW for improved troubleshooting and diagnostics as well, and at the highest level of safety. So that's it. I can take questions now. Okay, Chris, uh, it's John. I'm back. Um, I don't see anything in the uh, chat other than the poll. If people are still on the call want to fill out a poll on today's meeting. Great. If anyone on the call wants to unmute themselves, have a question for Chris, they're welcome to do that now. Hey, Chris, uh, once again, the software versions you were using, you had, uh, it was a version 12 of CCW? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Guess that's a wrap, Chris. Great job. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, guys.